rumors persisted of a place known as the Tower of Doom. Hey everybody, happy Fragment Friday. This is a Grumpy Old Guy Gaming, and today we're going to take a bit of a look at a concept here. Uh, something I've tried once or twice here on the channel. Just trying to fuse together my love of Dot .hack Fragment and my love of some older classic games. As you can see, we're here in a snow field. Um, just came up on the dungeon, and the great thing about these snow fields are just some of these visuals, like you have this mammoth frozen, maybe not so much by the weather, but maybe time itself just frozen on top of where this tower once stood, so that everything else is just wiped out, and all that's left is the entrance to the floors below. So, I'm splicing together some footage here of this run, along with gameplay from an Intellivision game called Tower of Doom. Uh, Tower of Doom was a pretty classic uh, dungeon crawler type game. If you ever played like the original Bard's Tale games or things like that, it's similar to that, but instead of a turn-based party RPG, it was a single-player solo one. So we're entering the first floor here. And our long arm is encountering a Lombada knife, and it looked like a Lamia there. Took them out pretty easily, a little higher than this uh, field's level. But we're going to have the main action, as usual, on the Fragment run. And we're going to be keeping up with the Warrior of Legend in the classic tower run up in the upper right corner where the map usually is. And I'll leave it somewhat transparent so you can see bits and pieces of the map through as well. Pick up a chest in the next room here. As it appears, the knight's doing a little exploring up there as well. Our long arm keeps finding encounter after encounter. Those are fire witches, that must have been what I ran into in the first room. And I'm not Bolamia, but some fire witches. A fortune wire on this risky treasure here leads us to an aqua guard. Now heading down this hallway into the next room. Portal right as we get through the door, we've got a couple squilla demons and a lambada knife whole ton of offense there if you're not careful. As for the knight, he's running to his own troubles, uh, all sort of traps appearing up there. As he keeps exploring the corridor, our long arm finds his way through this room and to the next. Seems to be a bit of a long and winding corridor itself, one of those T-shaped rooms, and he is greeted by three more squillities. These beasts just will not leave Grumpo Guy alone today, as he explores the ruins of the once fabled Tower of Doom. Not a challenging run, which is actually a video I was trying to put together. I never did find a six-floor castle walls dungeon. This is a five-floor dungeon here. But I just wanted to match them up, and because I'm, I'm really trying to get this crossover thing down, and I'm really trying to get the most mileage I can out of videos while work is so hectic. But I had the idea to do this video in this aspect. And I'm probably going to do a retro video, maybe drop that on Monday, uh, featuring the Tower of Doom prominently with scenes cut in the fragments. So, if you're curious to see just how the crossover goes and how I'm incorporating everything, uh, feel free to check that out. As always, I do thank you, all of you who have been watching any of my videos throughout the year. Um, 
I've noticed they've gotten a fair bit of attention, and I just wanted to take this moment to say thank you, because a couple days ago I got the old year in review thing in the numbers. I mean, not huge by YouTube standards, but uh, they were they were baffling to me. I was honestly amazed that you all took that much interest in watching these humble little videos I do for fun. And uh, I wanted to say thanks. So, the long arm is once again fighting Squilla Demons and Lombata Knives passing by the old neon lava pool there as we keep going further and further through this first floor. Whereas the knight wound up in a bit of a pickle, ended up running into a transporter and just can't seem to find his way through. You see that sort of staticky orange square, that is a uh, teleporter cube. Every time he steps on that, he's going to be transported to a random spot in that map. Unfortunately, it seems like the stairs are on the other side of that square, and he just can't hit that quadrant. Pretty smooth sailing for our long arm, though, and he's going to get down through the first floor of this dungeon rather quickly. Moving on to the second floor here. Had to stop and sort of get things back together. Gonna take a moment, reapply our buffs, and uh, remind you while we're doing that. If you're looking to play Fragment, um, best thing to do, check out Dot Hack Network. Check them out on Discord or check out their website, dothack.org. We've got a perfect uh, How to Play Fragment in 2020 startup guide. We'll show you everything you need to know about getting ready. And also, check out Fragment Resurgence on Discord. Whole group of players there talking about the game, playing the game, working on the coding of the game, updating the translation, checking out the events. Uh, just had a seasonal event spawn out of nowhere yesterday, again. I was joking, it seems like Fragment really knows how badly I would like 2020 to be over. It was about the fourth or fifth time I've seen the New Year's Day event. So it's, uh, it's true, any time you log into Fragment could very well be a special occasion. It all depends on timing and luck at this point. So we picked up a Shadow Blades in this room and the death out of that chest before moving on. Both Grumpo Guy and the Knight of Years Past seem to be making fairly quick work of their second floors, respectively. Got some Nomadic Bones and the Fire Witch here for the Long Arm, uh, all fall to one shot apiece. Whereas the Knight is winding through corridors and looks to be trying to fight off a bat takes it down rather speedily. A grumpo guy encounters a whole corridor of skeletons, some caged and some sitting there. Moves into the next room and we find a solitary chest on an altar holding a frost anklet before doing a little bit of backtracking. Up in the upper right hand corner, the uh, knight comes stairs down to the third floor, real quick floor there in the Tower of Doom gameplay. Probably gonna cycle back on that a little bit at some point here because it actually wound up being a much quicker run than I thought it was. Getting back to the fragment side here, you've got a couple fire witches easily dispatched. Get to the altar here and pick up a. Death Scroll. The death is acquired out of the chest. For once again winding our way back to the hub. Backtracking a little further. Just a quick succession of rooms there.
go ahead and break open that corpse warrior, find some pure water. So at this point, the Knight of Old is squarely a floor ahead. And Grumpo Guy is going to take another second to get his buffs up. Real long corridor here we're running down. On the other side, we find just a treasure chest sitting there. We've got an ice storm scroll. As our knight finds his way through a whole bunch of twisting and turning hallways, encountering a giant rat, he's doing a bit of exploring himself and finds a bear cat egg. Before running into some Serious danger. Here we've got a Lamia fighter, and it's got three nomadic bones with it. Again, well ahead of the uh, level that this dungeon is throwing at us, but four on ones, you have to be careful. If something starts combat off on you, you could very well find yourself just stuck in place there. Then I'll take this one of the monsters to have a death touch attack and you'll be in critical health before you know it. Not so much at this point. Um, still pretty safe in the mid-20s with Grumpo Guy. I want to say level 24 is where I captured this footage. But once you get up past level 35 into the 40s there and beyond, you really have to start worrying about the little things that a monster could have and making special note of little things like death touch or paralyzation of sleep skills. Pick a nice blow out of that chest and a raccoon ear cap out of the other. Moving to the next one, we have a portal with a swell of aim and a nomadic bone. Combo off to turn it into a one on one fight with the Squilla Demon, which we end in. Checking back in with the Tower of Doom gameplay, seems our knight is uh, frozen in the lights, or perhaps with some sort of magic spell, perhaps with some sort of cursed item. He fights a basilisk as our long arm moves through an L shaped room and finds a treasure chest. Ice storm acquired out of the chest, and back through the L-shaped room, and back to the business of exploring this third floor. Here we've got a pair of nomadic bones. Deal with them, not too much of a struggle there. Pick up an Aqua Guard out of the risky treasure there. And the next portal gives us more Squillity. Time with the Lamia Fighter. Perhaps, perhaps multiple Lamia Fighters there. We do get one risky treasure out of the whole ordeal. Gives us a shadow blade, a little twin blade weapon there, and a bear cat egg off the altar. Coming back through our little four-way hub. Find ourselves in one of those large square rooms, and a very empty one. 
before going to another square shaped room, this is one of the ones with the little insert cut out of the middle. Leads us to a T-shaped room. And here we encounter our next portal. While Grumbo Guy is fighting a pair of nomadic bones and a squilla demon, it seems that our knight has found his steps down to the next floor. So make a short work of the middle floor here. Running up against a rat, which was either magical in nature or some sort of graphical glitch as it was blinking different colors there. Long corridor ahead for our long arm, and this can only mean the stairs down to the next floor. Sorry about the little pause there. Uh, this is about the time where I realized just how different in times these two runs were. And I just went back and synced things up a little bit here. Uh, they weren't syncing super fluidly together as far as the floors went, so it didn't really didn't really hurt me at all to sit there and back it up. We'll just focus more on fragment side on commentary. Very full of demons and a nomadic bone. Once again, comboing off to get the nomadic bones out of our hair and do some initial damage to the demons. Not a bad call, especially if you know you can finish off the monsters with an attack or two. Get some initial damage there and just make the battle quicker. Of course, it always feels like a waste against slightly tougher monsters comparative to your level because you'll hit them for some combo damage and by the time you get back to attacking they'll regenerate a good deal of that health just due to idle time. So things you want to keep in mind when you're out playing the game. Another thing you want to keep in mind is Dot Hack Fragment is one of those games that just gets better with a full party. You could have up to two people run with you. And the perfect time to do that, to give it a try, is Fragment Friday when there's all sorts of people hopping around the different area servers. Go ahead, grab a couple friends, have an adventure. this large room here. Bit of a hub. Take them down and pick up a treasure chest with a lover scroll in it. Back through this large empty room, past the little pillar there. We're gonna wander our way back through. And a little semi-circle shaped room there, go to the complete other side. And we come upon another large room that yields a portal with a school of demon and a pair of lightning of fighters. Took down the Squilla Demon and then the Lamia Fighters each fall to a single strike. Open up the rusty treasure. And the second one spawns, so we will go ahead and disarm that as well. Be rewarded with a pair of items. Bearcat Egg out of the room before we depart. Heading to one of those sea ships. At the curve in the sea, we find a nomadic bones and a squilla demon. Finish them off and then we loot a treasure chest on the bottom end of the room. Not gonna check out what's on the other side there, just gonna go through the door here. Find ourselves looking for the lady fighter and a nomadic and a nomadic bones, pardon me. Neither one presents much of a threat to us, and we prepare to once again head on our way. 
our health and mana regen buffs seem to have died a little there. But before leaving, we open a treasure chest and find a unicorn blade. That would be a lower level blade master weapon. Probably got a ton of glitter on it. That's just me sort of imagining what a unicorn blade's gonna look like. Something similar to a flamberger, I would think. Just spark like. Hang into floor 5 here. Last floor for the dungeon. Going to hack our way through some monsters here. We get a couple of arrowfish to go for me a fighter. Arrowfish can typically poison, and I think at higher levels can paralyze too. You can either paralyze or sleep to get with. Well. So they become a nasty little utility monster. As you can see up there, I'm just making a quick reference to the Tower of Doom. The character's hit points are kept in the bottom right there in shields. And the little black bar that the shield is superimposed against are the max health at full. There are items that can extend them past full. But, if you had noticed in the earlier levels, the knight only had four shields, so at some point we did level up up in the gameplay there. Picking up some chests here in this large square room, getting back to the fragment game. And moving into the next, where we will find a portal, building a pair of scrollages. This is one of those rooms with a little rectangle cut out on the right side. Um, due to the design of the dungeon, it's filled with a spike pit. One of those moments in gaming where you're kind of happy for invisible walls. The last thing you'd want to do is take a walk off the ledge there, as I doubt any character would survive landing on any of those spikes. Tried to cut the corner on the door there and wound up with some awkward sort of rapid shaking. I do apologize for that. Sometimes I try to just... I really try to look slick on these when I know I'm recording and I try to get little tricks in like triggering the door thing while standing behind a pillar or something. And when it doesn't work out I just look like an even bigger dork than usual if that's possible. Coming up to a portal again just inside the door. And we're greeted by some arrowfish and a lamia fighter. One combo takes that all down like a hot knife through butter, or in the case of a long arm, a hot knife on a long stick. Pick up yet another raccoon ear cap. Not a bad little low level item, especially for wave masters just sort of dipping their toe into the party field. It's so relatively easy to find armor that gives you a low rep allows you to heal multiple allies at the same time. Finishing up that battle and picking up a frost anklet out of the chest. We're doing a little backtrack Checking out a different direction. This one yields us a portal. And we get a squill of demon and a couple arrows. Get a couple hits on the Squilla Demon early and then combo off killing all three in just about the same time. Looked pretty simultaneous to me, but the game has it happening in fractions of one to two and two to three. Winding our way through here. Just about a minute left in the video. I do hope you're all doing well out there as we can jump on a portal or two. Yeah. Oh, a school of demons. Yep, this is our last portal. All dungeon portals cleared. Seems our knight just finished up his last battle too. He had a basilisk. And 
and as he retreats through the stairs and down out of the tower, our long arm finds instead a dead end with a treasure chest. Let's go ahead and see what's inside. We get Smith's gloves, a healing potion, and a health charm. As you can see, the vitals for our knight at endgame in the upper right-hand corner here. That's going to do it for this special Fragment Friday run, The Tower of Doom. This has been a Grumpy Old Guy ga Gaming. Thank you for watching.